Tonight, our last four contestants compete in television's toughest quiz. And the prize for at least one of them, a place in next week's group final. Round one, the assault course, and a reminder that contestants are competing to beat scientifically assessed target times. As usual, those targets are based on the age and gender of each contestant. So the winner is not necessarily the first to cross the line, but the person who has scored best against his or her target time. This is Steve Romana in red, one of three men in tonight's heat, and a former sportsman of the year in his native Crawley. Now the best tactic on the assault course is to attack each obstacle, and Steve's doing just that through the switchback, setting the early pace along with Andy Wilbur in yellow, a data systems manager from Wellingborough. As the elder man, Steve has the advantage of a 20 second slower target time, so to beat him, Andy must be at least 20 seconds ahead of him. Both men are being closely chased by Caroline Moat, who has a slower target time to aim for, but it is Steve Romana out in front. I think the most enjoyable aspect of the Crypto Factor has been meeting some of my fellow contestants and the rapport and camaraderie we've built up. And a real battle developing between Steve and Andy as they go under the flat net. But in third place and determined not to let up is King cricketer Caroline Moat, who says she wants to beat the men. But at the halfway stage, Steve Romana is still leading. Caroline showing tenacity and technique there. But it's crucial that the contestants pace themselves correctly. Steve and Andy jostling for position on the cargo nets and now dragging themselves along those tram wires. Andy looking like he has quite a lot in reserve though. Most Saturdays I'm a referee. The round that I'm most looking forward to is the flight simulator. I've always enjoyed those sort of games. Trailing the leaders at the moment is Nigel Ingham in green, a science teacher from Bradford. But as they struggle through the S-Bend, Andy Wilbur is overtaking Steve Romana and beginning to pull ahead of him. Still close behind these two is Caroline making light work of the tram wires. I would love to be the first woman to win the new style Krypton Factor, as it's such a comprehensive challenge. Nigel's got an awful lot of work to do here if he's going to get back into this race. Certainly he's well behind Caroline at this stage and the other men. I enjoy playing games in my spare time. I'm a keen Scrabble player and I enjoy devising games myself. And Caroline Moat closing up on the men as all three come over the A-frame. And this is shaping up to be a really close finish with two-thirds of the course now completed. It's Wellingborough's Andy Wilbur first off the A-frame and as the younger man he has to make sure he's well ahead of both Caroline and Steve if he's to win. Nigel surely too far behind now but at the water splash Andy's extending that lead. He's an amateur rugby referee so he has plenty of stamina and he's pacing this really well. The exhaustion beginning to tell on Steve's face. He's being caught by Caroline who seems to have great reserves of energy. And Andy across the Burma rope bridge, he'll be the first to go down the aerial slide. It's a great performance from him, but has he put enough between himself and Caroline? He needs to be 30 seconds clear of her. So as he comes down the aerial slide, the big question is, has Caroline enough strength and pace left to get close enough to win? The big splashdown now for Andy Wilbur, and meanwhile back at the top of the aerial slide, Caroline is about to overtake Steve at the very last, but has she done enough to snatch victory from Andy and take the 10 points? She is well inside her target time and has comfortably beaten Steve, but will the clock give her overall victory? The big splashdown, and she has done it. She wins the assault course. They may think there's nothing tougher than that. They're about to find out. Let's now welcome our contestants. Performances on the assault course, but the winner from Nottingham, business analyst Caroline Moat. And the full points breakdown: Nigel two, Steve and Andy tied on their target scores, so each get six points, and Caroline takes ten. <laughs> Round two is our test of mental agility and our contestants compete against each other by touchscreen answering. They will see groups of visual information, such as numbers, letters, times, cards, and months. My questions will concern the relationship within those groups. 
So if we had the following numbers, 4, 12, 9, 5, I might say two numbers greater than 8, and the answer would be 9 and 12, because of all four numbers, those two are higher than 8. Okay, contestants, if you're ready, we will start with numbers. Six letters. Two numbers greater than six. No number between. Neither odd nor divisible by three. The difference is four. One less than half of ten. Two squared plus two. The sum is one more than twelve. Now letters of the alphabet. The seventh letter of the alphabet. Last but one letter in cascade. Not in the word damage. Five letters after B. Five letters after H. Two before the third image. Not in digit. Not before R or after V. Clock times. Four hours after 1350. Five and a quarter hours between. Three and a half hours before 0640. 40 minutes before 0140. Three hours after 0935. Midway between 00 and 0620. 13 hours before 0135. 75 minutes after 2345. Now playing cards. Five cards between. Neither male nor red. And that's it, the end of the round. And reminding you that where contestants tie, they're separated by the clock. We'll check the result. And the winner, snatching it in the very last second, is Caroline Moat. <laughs> and the full result, Andy scored two points, Steve four, Nigel six, and Caroline ten. <laughs> so, after two rounds, there is a clear leader. With a Krypton factor of 20, Nottingham's Caroline Moat. The response round and once again the good people of Blackpool batten down the hatches as our trainee flyers take to the skies courtesy of British Aerospace's state-of-the-art simulator. As usual, the contestants are aiming to follow the aerobatics of a lead plane as it spins and loops. The maximum score is 100, but points are lost for deviation, losing contact and crashing. Anything in the 80s and above is excellent. Steve Romana from Crawley is first into the cockpit. He's currently in second place after two rounds, so a win here would put real pressure on Caroline Moat, the current leader. At the top of the loop, his tracking score on the right of the screen is good in the high 80s. Diving down now to Blackpool's promenade, 400 feet, 350 feet, he should have started to level out. The nose is still down, he's going to crash into the sands of the south shore, and that's a disaster for Steve Romana. Next, Nigel Ingham, joint third coming into the round. He teaches science at Dane Court School at Radcliffe on Trent. I'm sure everyone there is cheering him on at this moment. Coming up to the top of the loop. And it's not looking good. The tracking score tumbling and the box above it shows that he's losing contact with the lead aircraft. He's searching the skies from the cockpit, but he has lost the leader. And you can see very clearly there that the trouble he's in. He has lost control and direction. Keep your eye on the box above the tracking score. It shows how much he's drifted away from the leader. The outer circle's been reached. The flight is about to be aborted. Definitely not a natural flyer. Now it's Wellingborough's Andy Wilbur, the data systems manager. Badly needing good points here. He's only got eight after two rounds in joint third place. But following those last two flights, he has a real chance to improve his position here. Good tracking score coming out of the loop in the 90s, that's excellent. 
Now, can he level out over the promenade? Put him back gently on the joystick. And that is beautifully done. Now, heading past the tower and into the second loop. Up they go, pulling four and a half Gs and still sitting right on the tail of the leader. This is a superb effort so far by Andy Wilbur. Leveling out again. And there is now just one tough manoeuvre left. Coming up in a few moments, a hard bank to the left, bringing him round to the tower on the finishing line. But I think he's in trouble. He has lost the lead aircraft. Look at the box above the tracking score. The outer circle has been reached. That means the flight's about to be aborted. And that is a real pity because he had been doing brilliantly. And it's all over now for Andy Wilbur and he's furious with himself. And finally, Caroline Mote, the contest leader, she's 10 points clear, now has a big chance to nearly double that lead. She comes from Nottingham, a business analyst, and she is going well. Through 5Gs to the top of the loop, a tracking score in the 90s, very good indeed. Now plunging down to the promenade, and she's got to judge this just right, pulling out of the dive. This is the moment. And she does that very well indeed. This is a great performance so far. Tracking score is still in the 90s. She passes the tower and now soars up into the second loop. And still that lead aircraft is right in front of her, right in the centre of her windscreen, precisely where it should be. And this is almost identical to Andy Wilbur's performance. But coming up is the manoeuvre that defeated him, so can Caroline do better? going to have to bank hard to the left about now and she's in trouble I think she has lost the leader and she's desperately looking for him but she's gone into a steep dive and crashed well it was so good up to that moment so the full scores two points for Steve four for Nigel six for Caroline and ten points for Andy which means that her lead has been reduced but still out in front with a Krypton factor of 26 is business analyst Caroline Moat. Yes, observation, testing the contestants' power of memory. As usual, we have a unique computer animation with five questions to follow. So if you're ready, contestants, watch carefully. Tonight's animation is called Machine for Living. Five questions on that animation starting now. When the second door of the machine opened, how many flowers or blossoms could be seen? What could be seen through the small window underneath the second or spring blossom door? What was written on the first or left hand door? In what direction did the cockerel end up facing? On the weather vane, what colour was the letter N for North? Nigel and Steve both had three correct answers there, but because a tie is decided on time, Nigel wins the round. So, two points for Andy, four for Caroline, six for Steve, and ten for Nigel. After four rounds then, still out in front now with a Krypton factor of 30, Caroline Moat. Coming up now, 75 seconds of rapid-fire general knowledge questions. And with two points for a correct answer and two points deducted for a wrong answer, it's vital for all the contestants to build up their points totals here to secure important advantages in the Super Round. So are you ready, contestants? The clock starts now. At the start of a snooker game, which colour ball is nearest to the apex of Steve? Black. No pink. Which Pink Floyd album is the best-selling ever by a British group? 
Steve. Dark side of the moon. Correct. Which planet with no moon orbits between Mercury and Steve? Venus. Correct. If venous blood flows towards the heart, which blood flows from that organ? The answer is arterial. Which artist, court painter to Charles I, had a pointed beard named after him? Steve. Uh, Van Dyke. Correct. Dick Van Dyke and Julie Andrews starred in which musical film, Steve? Mary Poppins. Correct. Popperings, Conference and Williams are varieties of which fruit? Andy. Pear. Correct. In which sport have the British pair, Stephen Redgrave and Matthew Steve? Rowing. Correct. Rotten Row and the Albert Memorial are Steve. Too late. Hyde, Hyde Park. Park. Too late, I'm afraid. It must be instant. What was built in Hyde Park in 1851, Steve? The, um... Too late, Crystal Palace. Billy Crystal and Meg Ryan starred in which film about a 12-year friendship that develops into love? Andy. When Harry Met Sally. Correct. And that's it. The end of the round and the leader going into the super round with a Krypton factor of 30 is Nottingham's Caroline Moat. So Caroline is in excellent shape for the Super Round, but how will all of them use their points to gain advantage? The Super Round is next. Yes, this is where it all happens. The cryptic rings, the response revolve, the laser matrix, the Krypton Mountain, they're all coming next. Welcome back. Our Krypton Factor contestants have survived five of the toughest mental and physical rounds. Right now, they face even greater challenges in the Super Round. The Krypton Super Round begins with the dramatic parachute jump. Next, the contestants must find their way through the cryptic rings. Out of the rings, they have to crack a series of computer codes before starting down the laser matrix, where breaking the beams incurs a disastrous time penalty. Next, six batons must be collected from the response revolve before the final hurdle, Krypton Mountain. Constructing the ladder comes first, followed by a race to the top. Have these contestants got what it takes? Well, I've just been handed the list here of the advantages the contestants have chosen as a result of the points they've earned in the first five rounds. And again, it's this response revolve that obviously they fear the most, because you have to remove six battens from this before you can actually progress. Well, these are the battens they have chosen to remove between two or three of them using their points before they actually get here. And a reminder that the leader going into the Super Round is business analyst Caroline Moat with a score of 30. Andy Wilbur is second with 24 and there's a two-way tie for third place with both Steve Romana and Nigel Ingham on 22. So how have they used those points? Caroline has spread her advantages throughout the Super Round, buying one ladder piece, two battens and a word in the computer challenge. Andy has bought two battens, each worth five points, and a word from the computer challenge. Nigel has bought three battens from the Revolve and a guide arrow in the cryptic rings. Steve, with the same points as Nigel, has opted for different tactics. He has purchased one ladder piece for ten points and two battens from the Revolve. As usual, the first problem, the cryptic rings, your personal codes will appear on the monitors in front of you. As soon as you've got those fixed in your minds, you can go, OK? All right, the Super Round starts now. First off the mountain with that 50-foot parachute jump is Corley Steve Romana in red, immediately followed by Andy Wilbur and Caroline Moat. And once more into the cryptic rings, a puzzle to challenge the contestants' power of recall and their ability to interpret this code. As we've seen throughout the series, the rings can be a particular sticking point for contestants. Usually it's those who've done well in the mental agility round who are first to exit, so keep an eye out for Caroline Moat in blue. This is Andy Wilbur in yellow, of course doing very well on the assault course, and agility comes in handy here. It's not easy to move at speed through those tubular steel rings. The only contestant with an advantage here is Nigel Ingham in the green. He bought a guide arrow, doesn't appear to have done him too much good at this stage. He's still searching for his next number or letter to give him a pointer. Andy Wilbur, he's found his way out. And Caroline Moat has now found her exit point and the crucial letter that allows her to log in at the next challenge. First to reach the computers will be Caroline Moat with Andy Wilbur in close pursuit. As usual, a code sequence has to be cracked at this point. 
To get the letter required, contestants have to press the key displaying the letter which follows it in the alphabet. Andy Wilbur has worked it out straight away. Caroline has also cracked the code in a very fast time, but not as quickly as Andy, who is making easy work of a task that contestants often find the most difficult. Andy, of course, bought a word with his points total, so he has one less to solve, and he finishes it now, which means he can set off down the laser matrix. Impressive work indeed from Andy. Remember, breaking the laser beams brings an immediate time penalty, so Andy has to tread very carefully. A seven-second time delay, not a good idea at this stage. Steve Romana finally made it out of the rings and onto the computer. Both Andy and Caroline have already built up a substantial lead at this stage. In fact, Andy's now at the response revolve, where he's only got three batons to remove, so he's well ahead of the rest of the field at this stage. His advantages have given him a very good lead. Caroline is on her last word. She needs to tap Z to get A, her final letter. And that's it, she's off down the laser matrix very fast. And she needs to be to catch Andy. But in her anxiety, she must be careful not to break any of the beams. The nightmare of the cryptic rings is finally over for Nigel Ingham. But both he and Steve have three more words to crack and are well behind Caroline and Andy. But this is a terrific performance from Andy Wilbur. He's rechecking, but that's definitely all the batons he needs from the Revolve, and he's on his way to Krypton Mountain, the final obstacle. Well, Nigel and Steve are still at their computers. Nigel isn't far off the last word, and Steve is almost finished. He has all his advantages to come, but it's going to take a tremendous effort to catch Andy, or Caroline, in fact, at this stage. Remember, though, there is a place in the group final for the fastest runner-up, and this is a fast heat, so there's still everything to play for. First at the mountain, Andy Wilbur, and with no advantages left to play, he knows he needs a big lead here to win, and that's what he's got, but is it enough? Caroline is now in the revolve and making light work of collecting those batons, and remember, she has the advantage of having two less to remove, so she can catch Andy. Another ladder piece in for Andy, and that's the final baton for Caroline. She's going really well, and about to head now for the mountain and the race to the top, as Steve enters the revolve. He has his two advantages to come, but is he too far behind Andy and Caroline? With his ladder completed, Andy begins his climb, with Caroline still having two pieces to fit. This is a great tactical performance by Andy Wilbur. He used his advantages to give himself an early lead. It's impossible for Steve and Nigel to catch him. The only one who can is Caroline. She is on the mountain. We know how tough she is from the assault course. Can she do it? Can she catch Andy? It's going to be really close. But it is Andy Wilbur who wins it. Well done. And Caroline is second and in with a chance of being the fastest runner-up. Well done, Andy. How do you feel? Oh, exhausted. Worth it, though? I think so, yeah. Right, we'll see you in the group finals. We will indeed. The rest of the contestants are still somewhat down there competing the course, but that Group C final is in fact next week, so do join us for that. Another exciting edition of the Krypton Factor. In the meantime, from Penny, from the contestants, from me, goodbye. See you. Double bills continue next with Des O'Connor's Take Your Pick. Then the Buzzards take on the Berries and it's the Littles versus the Harrises for big money in Family Fortunes. And later at 10, we hit Contestants Row for a one-hour special of The Price is Right.